welcome back. This is 9.1 lecture part two. I'll try this again. Spent about half an hour yesterday getting the first half of this. This is usually a one and a half day lecture in person, so I'm not surprised it's taken two videos this way. And if you haven't figured out, I'm not trying to go as fast as I would in the classroom. So, yeah, this is me slowing down a little bit. All right, uh, yesterday, what did we do? Let's Let's flip through these notes and talk to them. We talked about significance tests. Uh, talked about the assumption. This is the big question. How likely is a result this extreme or more extreme if the claim is true? We're going to always be assuming that the hoe is true. We're going to assume the hoe is true and we're going to say, how likely would this result be if it was true? So we had, uh, what did we have? A Silla Sun, the prolific free throw shooter uh, claimed to be an 80% free throw shooter. I had my doubts. I said, I don't think Wasilla's an 80% shooter. I think she might be lower than that. She goes out, she shoots 64%. And I say, okay, you know, 80% 80, 80 shooters, they don't shoot 80% every time. Maybe there's, maybe there's some variability. Maybe she just had a bad day. Uh, how likely is it that a true 80% shooter would shoot 64% or worse. And we did a little simulation, and we said, all right, if you're really an 80% shooter, uh, if, uh, if we let an 80% shooter go and do this 400 times, they'd only do this bad or worse three out of those 400 times. And we said three out of 400. That's, that's pretty rare. That's an uncommon result. Uh, maybe that makes me doubt Wasilla's claim uh, that she's an 80% shooter, but the, you know, the question is how far away does it need to be? How rare does this result need to be? Uh, just a, a, a side thought. Oh, I've got the whiteboard out. Um, in the end, where are we going to go to? Uh, we're going to go back to chapter 7 and those ideas of sampling distributions. Ultimately, we're going to have uh, either the assumed distribution of p hat, say that's approximately normal, mean p naught, square root p naught, 1 minus p naught over n, uh, and we've seen that before. Look, you know, what are we talking about here? Uh, this sampling distribution of p hats with our hypothesized value in the middle, some known spread. Uh, similarly, we can do this for x bar, x bar distributed approximately normally, uh, mean mu standard deviation sigma over radical n, and we can say, okay, how, we'll put a little knot in there, uh, we'll say, how likely are these observed values, maybe some observed x bar or some observed p hat, how likely is it to get a result that extreme or more extreme uh, if the claim about the mean or the proportion is true? So we can have that one up there for proportion. Feel free to pause and take a picture. Uh, take a pause, take a picture there. Uh, again, that's a little x bar down there. So x bar is our observed value and mu naught and p naught, those are the hypothesized values. All right, so uh, to the notes, uh, talked about null and alternative hypothesis, your null hypothesis, your your claim of no, no difference. Remember, null means nothing. Null, sounds kind of boring. Uh, nothing there. So we're going to be making claims about parameters and a proportion or a mean, and we're going to uh, test those claims about those parameters using sample statistics, p hat or x bar. Uh, we can talk about one-sided or two-sided claims. Maybe we think Wasilla's better than 80%. And so we just say, what's the probability she shoots that good or better? Uh, or maybe I think she's worse than 80%. Maybe she shoots that bad or worse. Or maybe I don't really know if she's better or worse than 80%. I just may, might not suspect she's, she's an 80% shooter. Maybe she's better than that. Maybe she's worse than that. Maybe if Wasilla puts her mind to something, she can be the best free throw shooter. I don't know. So we could test both sides. Uh, how, what's the probability of getting result that far or further away from what we claimed? Uh, we wrote some hypotheses and some appropriate alternative hypotheses. Remember our hoes and our haws, our nulls and our alternatives. Uh, we talked about maybe the most important idea from 9.1, uh, the idea of a p-value. What's the probability of getting a result the probability that we would get this sample result or one more extreme if the null hypothesis is true. Maybe one of the most important ideas out of 9.1. Uh, the smaller the p-value, the stronger the er evidence. Remember, a smaller p-value means that it's a rarer outcome. under the null hypothesis. It wouldn't happen as often. A smaller p-value is a rare occurrence. That's more evidence against your claim. Uh, if the p is low, then the hoe 
must go. That's true. That's true. If the p-value is low, you must reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we did that. Uh, we had a little bit of practice dealing with our uh, machine and self-paced thing. We had that. Uh, we did uh, a p-value thing there. On the back side, we talked about um, drawing conclusions based on p-values, interpreting p-values in context. This question right here, 29, 2009, number 5, this is a great uh, AP uh, question. Uh, strong hint there. Uh, they love asking those two things, both interpreting p-values and drawing conclusions comparing your p-value to alpha. So I cannot uh, scream at you any louder that that's a question that you're going to see on your test. Uh, maybe repeatedly. I, I would I would suspect AP would like to ask about that. So let's keep it moving. Um, let's 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 do this here. Let's keep moving into. I'm going to put this away. Uh, into the rest of 9.1. Old Trobot's tr hat. That's a good looking hat, isn't it? That's a good hat. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind in quarantine here. Uh, so plan for carrying out a significance test. If they ever ask you to carry out a significance test, they're asking you to do the four-step process. Stating, planning, doing, and concluding. State, state the null hypotheses, uh, and we're also going to say, and define your parameters. You're going to do that in your state step. Your plan step, you're going to check conditions for the appropriate test, and you're going to you know name the test. That would be good, too. Calculations, that's your do step. You're going to compute the test statistic, find a p-value. And interpretation, you state a conclusion in context in a sentence or two. We're going to do two. We're going to compare p-value to alpha. We're going to compare it to alpha. We're going to reject or fail to reject the hoe. And we're going to say that we don't, that we do or don't have evidence for the ha. Um, so let me zoom in on that. Uh, we'll, we'll do that over and over. But the three things you're going to need in your conclusion statement are your compared to alpha. If, it, if it's less than, you're going to reject. If it's greater than, you're going to fail to reject. If you reject the ho, then you do have evidence for the ha. If you don't reject the ho, then you don't have evidence to conclude the ha is true. So uh, let's do a, a little four-step process with batteries. We, we don't have a whole process yet, um, so we're going to show this uh, kind of separately. A company has developed a new deluxe double, AAA battery, supposed to last longer. Okay, so I'm going to circle that uh, statement, supposed to last longer. I see that, and I'm thinking I'm going to put a greater than sign in here somewhere. However, these new batteries are more expensive. Okay, so they want to be convinced that they really do last longer. I don't want to buy, I don't want to produce a new product. Uh, that is more expensive that people are not going to buy. Um, it's regular batteries last for 30 hours. Uh, the company selects a simple random sample of 15 and uses them until they're completely drained. Okay, state the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, state step. What am I interested in? We know it's regular batteries last for 30 hours. What am I probably talking about? Probably talking about mu, the mean battery life. Whoop, no L in that. Life for the deluxe batteries. Um, and my null hypothesis is that it's no different. If the new batteries aren't any better than the old ones, then their mean life is 30 hours. But I put all this work in, and I'd like to see that they are better than that, but I'm going to need some evidence for that. So there's my state step. Uh, my plan step, we don't actually have the tools for this yet. Uh, I'll tell you for now that this would be a one sample. This is for means, so you might have uh, surmised that it's going to be a t-test uh, for mu. Um, we would have to check conditions normally, random, uh, normal, and independent. Uh, here, I'll, you'll, you might notice that your n is 15, which is not more than 30, so you would need a box plot with no skew.
or outliers. Uh, what do you call no skew? You call it symmetrical. Uh, but we don't have any of that data, so we can't actually check that. So we have to assume that the plan step works. Uh, your do step. Um, what would your do step be? Well, we don't know what your t statistic is. It would give you some t statistic. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. Uh, but we know our p value uh, is 0 0.0276. Uh, so visually, what that what does that look like? Okay. So if these batteries really only lasted for mu naught equals 30 hours, well, we got a value up here say we got some observed X bar and the area above that is that 2.67 percent so this is our observed mean uh, so it's it's higher than average it, it you know it's it's we would only get a result that extreme about uh, 2.7 percent of the time if this was true conclude well, we got two conclusion statements here. We've got for alpha equals 0.05, and we've got alpha equals 0.01. Let's think about what that means. Uh, this is like saying we're looking for something that would happen 5% of the time. Looking here, 1% of the time. This is kind of looking for rarer stuff. If we set alpha to be 0.01, we're looking for rarer stuff. We need rarer stuff to be able to conclude. So at the alpha equals 0.05 level, we could say since p-value is less than alpha, we can reject the ho. We have evidence that the new deluxe batteries have a mean lifetime greater than 30 hours. Uh, but on the other side, our p-value is greater than alpha. We failed to reject the hoe. We're saying it wasn't rare enough. Think about what we're saying here. For the 5%, there might be a line here. That's the 0 0.05 level. Maybe, but, but maybe there's another line right here that's the 0 0.01 level. We're looking for something rare enough. Think about that. If we set alpha to be smaller, we're looking for rarer stuff. We're looking for things that would happen less often. We're looking for stronger evidence and to be able to, in order to be able to reject the null hypothesis. And let's go back to the beginning here and let's ask ourselves what what are these what what does concluding one or the other have to do? The uh, the consequence of this, if we don't reject, we don't make the batteries, we don't produce them. But if mu is greater than 30, we're going to produce them. Uh, and we need evidence to show that. We're talking about setting some industrial factory into motion, producing a new product. And that's not nothing. That takes some effort on some people, I imagine. And they'd, li just, you know, they'd like to do it only if it's worth it. Uh, over here, p-value is greater than alpha. We fail to reject the ho, the null hypothesis. We don't have evidence to say the new batteries have a mean greater than 30 hours. Oh, can't see it. There you go. Again, hopefully you're pausing this stuff every once in a while. This takes a while. I'm writing a lot. I imagine you have to pause it. I imagine with my handwriting, you have to pause it on a particular frame to make sure it looks good. Make sure you're doing that, please. And now, you draw these conclusions. We reject or we fail to reject the null hypothesis, but do we get it right all the time? Nope. Sometimes we get it wrong. Not every test is going to draw the correct conclusion. Sometimes it gets draws a wrong conclusion. We call these things type 1 and type 2 errors. Uh, in type 1 errors, I like to remember these things by asking what is the true thing? The truth, if, you have a, if you've committed a type 1 error, is that the hoe is true. If you've committed a type 2 error, that's where the ha is true. 
Uh, so let's let's look at those. Think about what the error could be. If the hoe is true but you reject it, don't do that. Don't reject the true hoe. It was true. You should not have rejected it. That's a type one error. The hoe was true. You said no. Why'd you do that? That's mean. Uh, but maybe the hoe is false. Maybe the hoe is false and needs to be rejected because the ha is true. Reject the hoe, but you didn't do it. You failed to reject. That's a type two error. Uh, so this is this is confusing. You know, you wanna you want to reject a false hoe. You want to fail to reject a true hoe. These are correct conclusions over here. But if we reject the truth or fail to reject lies, we've made an error. So this is a hard topic. You just kind of have to slam your head at it for a while. I'm going to present one way you can think about it, two ways you can think about it, three ways you can think about it. Here we have it written in words. Type 1 is rejecting the hoe when it's actually true. Think about that as a false positive. Type 2, accepting the hoe when it's actually false, a false negative. So type 1 could be thought of as a false positive. Type 2 error could be thought of as a false negative. Like five ways to think about it. Down here, let's remember what we assume out in the world. Our, our assumption out in the world is that you are not pregnant. We do not walk up to people and say, hey, you're pregnant. Once this quarantine's over, go to the grocery store and say, hey, are you pregnant? Just walk up to random women and say that. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. That's not nice. So what we assume out there in the world, our null hypothesis, is that you're not pregnant. And then we're going to need some evidence to say that you are pregnant. Maybe a, you know, positive pregnancy test or a, or a, or a shirt that says, there is a baby in here. I am pregnant. Uh, you know, something like that. Uh, so our type 1 error. Telling, rejecting the hoe when it's actually true. This man is not pregnant. How do I know? He's an old man. That's how I know. Uh, so he is not pregnant. Uh, and But to say that he was pregnant, that's a false positive. That's rejecting the hoe when it's actually true. A false positive. He's not pregnant. He's an old man. This lady over here, she's uh, she is pregnant, as sure as we can tell from a picture. We don't ever tell from a picture because we let them tell us. This is a type two error, though. Accepting the hoe when it's actually false—that's a false negative. Excuse me, false positive on the left. Type two error. That's a false negative on the right. Many ways to think about this. Type 1 error is alpha. The probability of type 1 error is alpha. Probability of type 2 error, often called beta. I don't care about that. Probability of type 2 error is 1 minus the power. The power is defines the probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. So that's the next hard idea we've got to deal with. You are going to be asked questions at the end of a FRQ about type 1 or type 2 error. You're going to draw a conclusion. You're going to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then they're going to say, okay, what if you did it wrong? What type of error might you have committed? So this is a very common FRQ follow-up. I'm telling you right now, you're going to have an FRQ that asks you to follow up by saying what type of error might you have committed here. Hard ideas. Let's keep moving. Um, so we've got uh, we've got a test in our in our pocket. We've uh, we've done type two and one and two errors. Uh, now we'll do a little practice with it. Um, take a moment to read through this one. Try it on your own. Uh, pause me. Just read through it. Try it on your own. Pause. Okay, you've unpaused now. A uh, recent report stated that less than 35% of the adult residents will be able to pass a physical fitness test. Out of shape. Uh, consequently, 
they're trying to fund more physical fitness programs. Okay, if we find out that they can't pass the pro pass the tests, maybe we'll get our people in shape or something. Uh, it's facing budget constraints. A skeptical report: the council will fund more physical fitness programs only if the recreation department can provide convincing evidence that the report is true. Great. So we assume they can do it, and we need evidence to show that they're bad. Uh, okay, describe what a type 2 error would be. Well, type 2, what is type 2 error? That would be failing to reject uh, a false null hypothesis. That is a false negative. But that's not really the answer. What is it in the context of the study? And what's a consequence of this? This is just kind of help you remember it ideas. What does this mean? It means if the hoe is false, that means that really less than 35% of the people can pass it. But we say that 35% can. We fail to reject the claim that 35% can pass when really less than 35% could. What's the consequence? The consequence is that we don't fund programs that are needed. Decisions are made based on the results of a, of a, of a test like this, maybe. Okay. Uh, we've got a part B and a part C. The part I'm really interested in is the part A, so for the sake of time, I'm going to uh, continue on from there. Part B... Um, I'm going to note, you can look this up. Please search it. Um, your, your quick answer for part B is your p-value uh, is greater than alpha. We fail to reject the hoe. We don't have evidence that less than 35% could pass. And my very quick answer for part C, what's the flaw? These are volunteers that likely don't represent the population. They're probably fitter. More likely to pass. Thus we will overestimate Please, go back and look at this. That was too fast. I did it for the sake of time. Uh, down here, another one, 2009, number five. I'm just going to tell you to do that on your own. Look it up. Um, you can search it, AP scoring guidelines, and you will find it. Uh, we have another way. Uh, now, now to talk about power. Um, I've got a lot of rambling here about power. Uh, and you should read it. Uh, power is probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false. What do you want a test to do? You want a test to reject false hoes. We want our test to reject false hoes. And a more powerful test rejects more false hoes. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here. How can we make a test that does a better job at rejecting false hoes? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summarize that down in three points for the sake of time here. Uh, you could make alpha larger. What happens if you make alpha large? You just are generally rejecting more often. Think about what that means to take uh, alpha from 0.01. Alpha equals 0.01. We reject out here. That out there is our rejection region. Maybe we made our alpha 0.1. Well, what happens if we make our alpha 0.1? then we have a much larger region. If alpha is 0.1, we're going to reject out here. We're going to reject more often when alpha gets larger. As alpha goes up, 
we reject more. Uh, one tailed rather than two tailed. Yeah, that one's that one's fine. Increase your sample size. Make n larger. Because what happens when you make n larger is you just decrease sample variance. And the last thing we could do is test claims further from the truth. Uh, how can you increase power? You are going to have questions about this. Put a little star by it. AP loves this as a multiple choice question. Um, there's a lot to read here. You should read through it. But in, in, in essence, you can reject more by changing alpha, increasing alpha, increasing your sample size, or test claims further from the truth. Think about this. What's easier to say? I can shoot 90% from the line or I can shoot 80% from the line. It's easier to say that my claim of 90% is false because it's clearly further from the truth. I don't know what I shoot from the line. Um, I think that's where I can stop for the day. Um, there's a lot in here on power. Um, Use those three things. How can I increase power? How can I make a test that rejects false claims more often? I can talk to more people. If I talk to more people, I'm more likely to get a result closer to the truth. Increase N. I can increase alpha. If I'm increasing alpha, I'm generally rejecting more often. If I'm generally rejecting more often, I'm going to reject false hoes more often. And the third way uh, is to test claims that are further from the truth. Uh, that one we don't always have as much control over, um, but it is true nonetheless. There you go. Uh, 9.1 lecture complete. You can have a 9.1 quiz uh, tomorrow. Get your homework done. See you.